of the continuous violence against black women and face at the hands of the state. The system of police and state violence that target black men also disproportionately affect black women. Black women are disproportionately criminalized, targeted, incarcerated, and murdered by police vigilantes. We see the ways that the state has ignored its violent treatment of women and girls like Marissa Ale Alexander, mm -hmm. Ayanna Jones, Tarika Wilson, Yvette Smith, Rika Boyd, and so many others. So one, one, one thing I can put the paper down and tell you really quick, one thing I can put the paper down and tell you really quick, uh, women of color, especially poor women of color, are exponentially the largest growing people that are being incarcerated and being arrested right now in America. That's right. See, we all, we've all we always known that black men have been hunted down and put, and put in prison, that black men are, are eight times more likely to go to jail for the same crimes that a white men will be arrested for. We, we've, known, we've known about the dispro disproportion of black men going to prison, but people haven't been talking about women of color and especially gender variable women of color and, and the LGBTQ community and, and, and the people of color in those communities are especially harassed, oppressed, and, uh, and all around fucked with by police because the police feel like those, those, the easiest victim is the easiest victim. Um, we know that anti-black anti racism is the cause of ongoing terror, repression, and the state violence in black communities. This is, this is the form of violence that killed Yvette Henderson. She was extrajudiciously executed by the Emeryville PD because she was a black woman. And one thing I want to talk about, there's been a lot of pushback about, oh, she might have had a gun. Oh, she, she robbed a store. Oh, well, see, none of that matters to me because all I know is they took out an assault rifle, shot her, and didn't let an EMT even go around her. Like, okay, she's shot, she's shot, she's bleeding out on the ground, and you handcuffed her and didn't let an ambulance even touch her, and the body lied there for five hours. Now, for me, that's inhumane and unjust. The extrajudicial killing of anybody of any color, if you're shot down and you're bleeding, you let an EMT get to that person. If this is a, if this is a war, they have medics. Medics come in and even, even treat the enemies of that war. And be, us as people of color aren't even treated as the enemies of a war. We're, tr we're treated as terrorists when, obviously, we're not terrorists. We're people, especially, excuse me, but especially for, for crimes of poverty. Crimes of poverty, like shoplifting to be able to feed your pet, feed your children, you should not be killed over. That's right. I mean, that should be a, especially you should you shouldn't even be put in prison over crimes of poverty. You should be put in a program of vocational training, get some mentorship, some counseling. There's many other methods to be able to train our community and to help our community besides imprisoning and and killing it. That's right. All right. Excuse me, I'll come in through. While people across the country are, are waking up to the reality of the terror that black communities face at the hands of the state, the police continue to increase their use of force in black and brown communities. And, and in black and brown communities and, and, and communities across the country, the over-militarization of the police, instead of, instead of alternative... Pro oh. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Well, this is, this is loud enough where I ain't going to stand up on a pedestal and I won't probably... My hands won't shake so bad. But, uh... Let me skip ahead because I hate reading, and I know I can, I can read this whole thing and stop every other paragraph. Um, like I said before, what I wanted to reiterate, there are many organizations and there are many people from organizations here. We're not going to have organizations come up and talk. We're going to have people come up and talk, people who've lost loved ones, people who, who felt the bite uh, and the criminality of the biggest gang in America, the, the, the blue gang, you know what I mean? Because they could go and seize, seize your property, arrest you, take your livelihood from you, and, and have no repercussions. Even if they, and especially, and even when they're in the wrong, they cover themselves so well because of the, because, because of some called, um, the, the police, oh, damn it. Bill of Rights. Thank you. Besides the regular Bill of Rights and the American Bill of Rights, the police have their own Bill of Rights. This isn't in this paper, but real quick, we, we, I, I want to touch on, upon the police Bill of Rights. The police Bill of Rights gives, if there's an LAPD officer right now that's a, that's a well-known LAPD officer, or let's say there's a San Francisco officer, and that officer repeatedly beats, harasses, and, shot, and has shot, because there's o, OPD right now that have shot three or four people, killed two, three, four people. These people don't get suspended, they get promotions. And when, and when they and when they do get and when they do get a suspension for investigation, it's a paid leave, yeah. right? And they get their job back and they get another promotion. Uh, so this, this type, so it's the police bill of rights. Even if they are found to be negligent and guilty, and they're fired from the police department, you can't get that information when they go to the next police department. The only thing that the police department can say is, yes, they worked here for six years. Now, if I was working at a bank and ripped the bank off, I couldn't get a job at another bank, right? 
If I was working at an old age home and kick, and, and kick the shit out of an old, a, a elder, I couldn't get a job at an old age home. But the police could run around, shoot at people, harass people, terrorize people, and go get a job doing the same shit in another state or another city. So that's one of the many things the Police Bill of Rights gives the, the police the, the affordability to do what they want to behind the thin blue line. All right. Um, uh, we're gonna t I want to talk about uh, what, what actually happened to Yvette. Yvette was shot with three different weapons, one of which was an AR-15. If people don't know what an AR-15 is, if you've ever seen an AK-47 or an M-16, the AR-15 is an assault rifle. The, AR the assault rifles are not meant to do... You don't go hunting deer with assault rifles. You, you don't go shooting targets with assault rifles. You, assault rifles are used in, 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 in violent altercations to suppress and oppress people or to fight wars. So when you're pulling out assault weapons, the only people I've been hearing about with assault weapons are, are usually these people that are going into these theaters and shooting everybody up or, or cops. So like for me, there's no reason for a police officer to have an assault weapon because two weeks ago, let me see, what, what, was, what was the name? Just two weeks before the extradition execution of Yvette Henderson, a white man by the name of Sebastian Ledwick was arrested after shooting at Emeryville police he was not fired on by the EPD, but taken into custody. Now, I read, I, real quick. Oh, he shot at OPD, excuse me. That, that was only two blocks from where Yvette was, was killed. Um, real quick, I'm going to have to take a pause. Yvette didn't shoot at nobody, was trying to get, get away from people, and they laid her down like a dog. So there, there's a huge discrepancy here. And when you repeatedly see people who can get shot in the leg or not shot at all, you know, there are many people who have been unarmed, who have been people of color, and you see, and, 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 all, I, and, and not pulling the race up, but when you see the white folks, they get shot in the leg, somehow they get shot and live, and somehow they don't get shot at all when they're shot at police officers. It, it, the disparity is too great to not talk about. Um, Emeryville PD engaged in a shoot first policy as police departments so often do in black and brown neighborhoods. They denied Yvette medical attention and would not admit that they profiled Ms. Henderson prior to firing on her, which led to her death. Emeryville Police Department, together with the media, worked to change their initial report at least three times. They went in, like KTVU and Channel 4, their, their, their internet, I wouldn't see this. They went in and actually re edited the actual news reports that they had, they didn't say, oh, this was a mistake, oh, like, like a newspaper would, like, oh, well, well, remission or, 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 or well, we found out new information. They just went and re-edited this by, because the police would change their story. So the, so the news agency would change the story. So the news agency, the mainstream media works with, works to give an image that they want to be shown. They're not investigative reporters that are actually trying to find the truth. Because if the truth of the matter, they wouldn't just change the story when, when they're told to change the story. Um, Emeryville Police Department, together with the media, worked to change the initial reports at least three times. They're refusing to provide the videotapes that captured what happened and portray an Yvette as a violent criminal to degrade her memory as a means to justify her killing. Yvette was a mother and a loved family member. We know her life mattered. We're demanding an end to police murders and violence against black women in particular. So real quick, so real quick, because I'm, because I could get long-winded on like the whole disparity about you know the the uh, closing schools and and with 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 what is it two million, two two point one to 2.2 .2 million people failing high school every year. There's at least that many people going into prison. The special education programs is it, when when people don't need special education, all they need is a mentor or a counselor. But instead of, instead of getting what they would call special education, they get failed and they go to prison because people without an education are five times more likely to go to prison. And and talking about and, and talking about um, that, I want to stop talking. I want to bring up Lamisha. Lamisha. Uh, she, she she's an elder and a comrade. I've known her for many years. She 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 started the interest stealing. Uh, I'm sorry. The Edris Steli Foundation. Um, I, I'm going to let her explain what that is and what she does. 
How are you all doing? Hi. Thank you. Thank you for being here. In spite of the snipers up there. Yeah, this is kind of tragic. Um, my only child was a black man, 23 years old, Eagle Spelling. And he had some type of an emotional breakdown inside of the Metreon Theater in San Francisco. Uh, he called for help. He called 911. Nine minutes later, he received 48 bullets. Uh, his brain was shot out of his uh, head. And uh, ever since, that was a wake up call. And that's why I'm here with you all in solidarity for all of you who are at risk for being poor, black, or brown, or having mental health issues. I don't want to take advantage of, of this, of this uh, mic much longer. What I want to do is just Serrano Garcia. Presente. Chantel Davis. Presente.